two, one. Booster ignition and liftoff of Space Shuttle Endeavour on a 21st century mission placing Earth back on the map. In its 19-year career, the Space Shuttle Endeavour has circled the Earth more than 4,600 times and served in crucial missions, including the creation of the International Space Station. Uh, humankind's activities in space have been transformative in shaping our modern life. I met with one entrepreneur who is turning to satellite technology to get a better picture of pollution. It's a beautiful, clear morning in midtown Manhattan. And at the Queensboro Bridge, Gavin McCormick, an American environmental activist, has his sights set on an unexpected fixture of urban life. So we're here in this park because it happens to have a really good view with the river of a bunch of power plants. You know, I lived here for a while, just a block down the street, and some of my neighbors had no idea we lived next to one power plant, let alone eight. So I think it's kind of interesting the level of invisibility that we attach to one of the most dangerous things going on around us. You're described as a high-tech environmental activist. Is that a good summary of what you do? Yeah, you know, it's interesting. I don't come from a tech background, but the way the world is going, the more we look at this stuff, the more we have come to believe that artificial intelligence really can be a game changer for environment. Artificial intelligence that can process the imagery that's captured by some 300 satellites orbiting Earth. What we're looking at from space is the CO2 emissions coming out of power plants. So looking at the pollution, looking at sometimes the heat or the steam, that's how our artificial intelligence algorithm can get a really good sense of what's going on for every polluting source in the world. Satellites play an outsized role in enabling modern human life, from GPS navigation to communication to weather data. We have grown reliant on this 65-year-old technology. Now, a cadre of scientists and entrepreneurs are using satellite imagery to gain a better understanding of pollution. We know that satellite technology plays such a critical role in our modern lives, especially in regards to communications. But how did you realize that it could play a critical role in exposing hidden sources of greenhouse gas emissions? And there's all this free satellite data put up by a large number of countries, America, India, China, Japan. They're making this all available to the public, and it's passing overhead every single power plant every day. And we started thinking, gosh, I wonder if you could detect pollution just by looking at pictures of what satellites can see. And it turns out you can. What can satellites see that us humans cannot see on Earth? Yeah, so if you look at a normal factory or car, it's spewing out this horrible pollution that affects your lungs and climate. But you can't see it. Uh, and what you can do with a satellite is you can look uh, in the invisible spectrum uh, at things like thermal infrared, and you can see pollution like CO2 and methane. The steam will, uh, will detect. In 2020, McCormick's environmental tech startup what time co-founded Climate Trace, a global coalition of nonprofits, tech companies, and universities that is trying to monitor all the human-caused greenhouse gas emissions in the world. We know where all the pollution is in the atmosphere, but we don't always know how it got there. So at Climate Trace, each one of us is uh, breaking off a different piece of the puzzle. We've got about 50 collaborating organizations working on measuring where did all the emissions come from everywhere in the world and making that shared to everybody. McCormick calls the Climate Trace Inventory, released in 2021, a kind of Wikipedia for pollution data, which can be used and accessed by policymakers, regulators, and also the general public. For McCormick, the vision is to provide real-time transparency in emissions data to spark meaningful action. What we're hoping to do next year is to go from saying, here's the pollution of an entire country, to here is every individual factory, every individual ship, every individual plane, so that we really have for the first time a detailed sense of exactly what is causing climate change. Where's it coming from? Who is driving it? It's gonna be really different when you can't hide where all that pollution is coming from anymore. At the Red Hook Terminal in Brooklyn, cargo from around the world is being processed. The International Maritime Organization found that from 2015 to 2018, the shipping industry released around 1 billion metric tons of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere each year. How do you think your technology is going to help humanity win the battle against climate change? I really think that people are not prepared for what is about to happen, which is that we are just starting to see emissions bend the curve 
And we have gotten so used as a community to the idea that the fight against climate change is hopeless. To make decisions, people need data, and you're providing the data to do that. You know, data is one of the few things where there can be a real win-win. There can really be a something for nothing if previously you were blind, and now you can actually see what's really going on. <laughs> for space environmentalist Maura Baja, part of making the invisible visible is noticing how human activity intersects with many different spheres. The same behaviors that we have on land, we now see that in the ocean with plastics. All of a sudden it's like space, and it was like, wow. It was like a thread that I could connect amongst kind of these three things and I said I want to see if I can do something about it.